Jeffrey, it's not the morning, it's the afternoon. What? I feel a little out of sorts here, man. What's... Are you okay? Cause, I know. Because I know I, we, we actually had a couple of uh, uh, coaching webinars this morning. Yeah. And I really, you were wobbling the whole, well, at least the first one, you were wobbling and the wrong name and, and, totally. and I was trying to bring you in and you thought we were working on doubles, but it was really singles. And then I was wanting to kind of reach through the internet and just slap your <laughs> face a couple of times. Well, you know, like I said, you know, sometimes uh, you don't hit a grand slam or even a home run. You know, I was just happy to get the base hit today. You weren't even fouling yeah. off pitches this morning. I'm telling you that. <laughs> you were swinging and missing, and and uh, it was pretty funny. Pretty darn funny, but uh, yeah. I think you recovered. I think you recovered. Yeah, anyway, anyway so, we, we snuck out of that okay. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. So look, uh, it's the afternoon. Um, yeah, we, we, beautiful we, afternoon. Yeah, cool. Same, same down here in the desert. So... Um, I want to open up today's discussion on a match I watched last week down uh, in Houston when I was down there with one of our students who was uh, who was playing the tournament and uh, and we were we were watching the great Jimmy Parker, right? Yeah, the, the guy who is the legend, the legend, and just more gold balls than Fort Knox, I think. Um. And anyway, so we were we were watching him, and, and Houston's at least where they where they host the the indoors, interesting club. Uh, it's downtown. The seating is like good for one court, but then yeah. after that, the only way you can watch matches is you actually have to walk on the court, which is kind of a cool thing, right? You actually get to get right there on the court, and uh, they have you know some extra chairs besides the players, benches and chairs. So sitting down there and. Um, and one of our students with him, and, and what I'm marveling at with, with Jimmy Parker is not his shot making. And, you know, he's going about 95% for a serve. It's just, he's just, you know, and, and, and he's just never missing a ball. And then his opponent, uh, a student, a semi-student of yours, would you say semi or, or sort of a student? Once in a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'd say, I'd say he is. Okay, know. all right. So, um, and he played some beautiful drop shots, incredible drop shots, which, which I know is part of the plan. Right. And the thing that just blew my mind about Jimmy Parker is he would arrive. He would arrive to these, and you'd watch him from the moment he recognized it and took off. His, his, his head just kind of stayed on this, it's like he was ballroom dancing, Right. It's like he could be twirling around and this as he's coming in. And he arrives <laughs> to the ball. I swear to you, he arrives to the ball. And I'm thinking, I've got no idea where he's going to take this thing because he's he's so on balance. His right. posture is so good. And that when he plays the shot, whatever he played, the shot he played, um, he was able to recover if need be. Right. Where you see so many players when they take off for a drop shot. I mean, it is like... It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like a bull in a china shop just taking off and just snorting and running and screaming. And there's that little, we have another right. student that we, you know, that kind of starts off with a panic run, right? The panic run. Right. right. And, and Jimmy just had none of that. It was just all smooth. Right. And, and so anyway, I just want to say that, that I think that we probably don't uh, work enough as players on uh, a movement that's just super efficient, super clean. <clears throat> I would say the other thing I saw with Jimmy, too, is the way he ran with his racket. By the time he arrived, it wasn't like he was going, well, i got to get my racket back, or I've got to get into this big setup position. He would just run in a very natural way right. that, that when he arrived, <clears throat> and look, we're all using kind of bigger rackets now, that he just, and he, there, there was no extra need for racket movement, and he could go, he could kind of, you know, bunt up the line, but the bunt was pretty firm. Right. You know, or if he sensed the guy was staying back, he could make it look like a bunt and then just play a little dropper. Or he could just come around it and carve it over here across court. Right. So, what do you think? I think, uh, <clears throat> I mean, do I you think, think that, that you, do you think, oh, so, <clears throat> me too. Um, one of the things we talked about before we sort of hit on this topic was how so many players get, get in the ball machine. And the ball is bouncing in that one spot 
over right. and over and over again. And they're working on that forehand. They're working on that forehand. And then when they go out to play a match, they actually have to move five feet to their right. Right. And they never, even though it's five feet, when they arrive there, it's not the same balance and posture they had when they were on the ball machine. Right. So I guess what I'm saying yeah. is that we got to work on our movement because, you know, it's not like golf or it's not like baseball where you could stand there. And we need to be right. way more efficient with our practice in terms of, like lots of times I practice and I try to see how smooth can I move? I don't think about strokes. I don't think about right. tactics or strategy. How smooth can I move? And, yeah. and, I, and I, think, I think if we practice that from time to time, then you give yourself a, a good chance to arrive like Jimmy Parker does. He, he arrives and he's just, he's just, I mean, the stroke efficiency is ridiculous because of his balance and posture. Right. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you come and do it now. <laughs> well, you know, that's a huge part of it is, is, you know, again, we're talking about, I mean, any level of a game, stroke efficiency is a, is a major factor, right? I mean, Indian Wells just finished up yesterday, and now they're on to the Miami Open. And, you know, there are guys along the way when you're watching them as they're trying to come up through the ranks, you can kind of see like certain inefficiencies just don't translate ultimately right. to longevity and sustainability. Right. So, but now, now you know, carry that thought now into senior tennis, you know, 50s, 55s, and on up 60s and 75s and 70s that were down there when you were in Houston. And, you know, getting better as you move up through the senior ranks, isn't about adding stuff. It's really about taking stuff away. It's really about becoming more efficient. The energy that is in the tank needs to be used efficiently and economically. And so when you watch a beautiful player like Jimmy Parker, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing really this, this, if you know, cooking terms, he has simmered his game down to this beautiful, his posture's always great. Um, he he when his first step out of the gate there's a little inertia so he's he's out like a runner and then immediately he's he's upright you know when you watch great sprinters they're not hunched over toward the finish line they come out of that out of the starting gate and then they're upright and they're and everything's working underneath them in fact some of the fastest sprinters on the planet it almost looks like their upper body is tilted backwards i mean it's pretty amazing when you when you look at it you kind of go how is that even, you know, I don't get it, but guy's the fastest guy in the world. I guess it's, I guess that's right. So, okay. so I think, you, you know, I guess, you know what I'm saying is that efficiency has to be part of the equation when you're looking at what, what should I do to improve? Again, it's one of those things that, what are those things that are controllable that will improve my current skill set without me hitting another ball? And, you know, we've talked about fitness and all the different things that you can do there that are controllable. I can lose 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds. I can become better cardiovascular health. I can start a, you know, stretching or some kind of program to help my muscles feel a little bit more uh, um, flexible, right? My joints, I can, I can work on a little bit more range of motion. All those things will help your strokes immediately be more efficient and better so in right. this in this what you're bringing up is then the actual movement on the court and how does that translate and so that's when like you said you know the ball machine is great standing there in one place initially is a good thing because you're trying to find where's the sweet spot in this whole deal and you want a ball that's slow enough to be able to manage everything that you're trying to um, emulate and trying to correct or you know do <clears throat> But then at some point, you've got to speed that up a little bit. And, and so now you've got to get more efficient at being quicker at the preparation, little dance in the footwork, settle and hit. And now I need to do that, like you said, five feet from where I am right now. And, okay, now I've got a range. The concentric circle around my starting point now is, is one and a half steps. Okay, can I get it to two and a half, three? If you can get it out to three steps – you're covering a lot of court. That's right. Yeah. You well, I, I mean, you're covering a lot of court. So I think one thing um, that, so we're talking about what, what, what Jimmy Parker does. I mean, let's talk about, you know, one or two things that, uh, that players can do to, to work on their efficiency. One thing 
that I think about. Every, every time that I think about getting quicker in the court, sprints, that kind of thing, to me, it's, it's got to be combined with I've got to do it in a way. And you know me, I like to do a lot of sprints where I'm running from one fence to the other fence. So it's, you know what, like a 120 yard in theory, 120, no, I mean 120 foot sprint. Right. right? So, but what I do before I start is I turn and I look at the opposite fence and I find the spot over there. It might be, you know, the crosshairs of, of some posts or the fence post, or it might be a stain where, who knows, something over right. there. And so when I run, when I'm sprinting towards that, I'm just not going as fast as I can. I'm trying to go in a way that that little dot over there, whatever it is, that spot, is not jumping up and down. I'm trying to move in a way, and this is the way, what I see, uh, that's what I saw with Jimmy. He moves in a way where his eyes aren't getting, you right. know, banged up and down, bounced around. So that when he's just, he's just visually, he's so, he's, his acuity on the ball is so good. So he knows when he arrives, do I want to be to the right of the ball? Do I want to be to the left of the ball? And, and I'm sure that by, you know, some halfway between, he's probably already decided where he's going to play the shot. But my point is, is there's one thing to work on your speed. It's another thing to work on your speed where you also improve your visual contact with the ball. Right. And, and, you know, if the ball's jumping around over there, I mean, look, it's a simple exercise. You can, you can find a spot 120 feet away and you can start walking at it. And when, right. and when you're walking at it, that, that thing is maybe moving a little bit. And then you can start jogging and it starts to move a little bit more. And then you go out a dead sprint and it's just, it's just banging all over the place. So, right. And I remember that we used to do this in baseball. You know, we hadn't played baseball all year. Then the spring would come around and the first few balls that would go up in there, you'd go, oh, where is it? And then, you know, right. and then after a day or two, you'd finally settle down and your movement would settle down to where you could you could just track it and it was just I mean you just you just track the whole ball. Right. So um, I would encourage everyone to to get out there and work on work on your 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 movement so that you're super efficient in a way that helps you track the ball better. Right. It's not just quiet. running up I mean, for a drop a, shot. It, 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 yeah, your your head's quiet in the whole thing. You know, I mean. You know, you, you've, you know, through your teaching years, my teaching years, you can see some, you know, somebody out there like something's wrong with my forehand. And really there's the kind of the stroke is actually okay. It's the fact that they're tilting their head literally off to the side while they're trying to track a ball coming inside and their your brain just can't quite figure out like right. the rest of the equation. Cause you, you've got this skewed sideways view of the ball. And literally I just like, can you just like get your head to be straight up and down and all of a sudden the clean contact comes back and like, okay, can we do that now? Just yeah. your stroke's fine. So I think it was Vic Braden back in the 70s. Didn't he do a vi – I think he did a visual study on tracking the ball while while moving, and this was for club players. And because of their inefficiency in movement, um, I think the study found that basically, you know, running to a forehand, um, your, your eye-brain ability to track and to anticipate, read the arc of the ball and where it's going to end up next to you is unbelievably efficient. However, visually, actually visually seeing the ball, I found I think what he came up with was that basically you're almost legally blind when you're running. If if your running is that right. jarred, right, right, um, because the ball, you know, the the eyeball is actually bouncing around inside the socket, and there's there's all this stuff going on. So, and, and that's you know, like I said, I think and literally, I think you go back and Vic Braden, I think was the first because he did that. He had this camp down there with all the different scientific studies. And I think that was one of them was tracking a ball. While well, running. I heard I heard somewhere, and maybe it was Vic, maybe it was different sport. I'm not sure, but they said that that when you move and you're and you're slightly off balance, so you're trying to track this moving tennis ball, and if you get too far ahead, if you get off balance, whether it's forward or sideways, whatever, is your brain wants to find a stable object to reorient <clears throat> you back in space. Right. The moving tennis ball is not a stable object. So then right. you take your eye, you take your eyes off the ball for a second and try to readjust. Right. Is you probably don't have enough time to do it. So. No. Well, so, well your brain, your brain is, is processing a priority function. The minute, the minute we lose balance, and we've talked about this, and I show this to students, you know, that the minute your balance is challenged, your brain shuffles priority. 
that you're not, it's not going to allow you to fall on the court if it can help it, which means it's going to do its best to pull you back on top of your feet. So you're never actually going to arrive at the ball. You will continue to send your arm while your, your body is actually trying to renegotiate to get back on top of your feet. Um, so, so that right there, just totally the, the opportunity to actually use your practice stroke Bye -bye. Is, to is totally out the window <laughs> because that's the priority at that point. You yeah. know, your brain isn't stupid. I mean, I know in my younger days, you know, before Boris Becker made it famous, you know, I, I dove on a hard court. I can't count how many times I did it to, to. So that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and I got to tell you that, that to do that, to do that, you have to override what your brain is telling you not to do at the moment. I mean, it is a difficult thing to do for anybody that's done it. They know this to get yourself airborne parallel with the ground. Yeah. And, and I got, you know, and the, the flight is okay. It's the sudden stop at the bottom that actually is the, <laughs> is the hard part. <laughs> right. That's right. You know? Right. All right. Good. Well, listen, I, Jim. I don't have, I don't, I'll, I'll end, end it with this. I don't have a fear of flying. I have a fear of not flying. <laughs> well, then it, then it does become a contact sport. <laughs> right. All right, guys, listen, thanks anyway. for hanging out with us today. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, get out there and do some sprints, do some running, not, not any long yeah. distance running, but, but do some, do some stuff where you pick out an object on that back fence that you really work on making sure you keep it quiet when you're moving. Uh, Jeff, we are still offering a free 10 minute coaching call. Uh, the three of us, it's a private call. We get in the phone and, uh, a, th a three way call. And all we ask is, is bring with that one thing in your game right now that you're struggling with, have not quite figured out how to solve it. Uh, you want a little different result than what you're getting right now. And you're just not sure how to get there. And let's see if we can't point you on the right path. Uh, the way to do that is to go over to goldballhunting.com, drop it in a first name and email address, and you'll get, you'll get uh, access to our online calendar where you can cherry pick a date and time, and we'll get, the, uh, we'll get the call set up. At this point of the podcast, Jeff, it's when we kind of say, look, um, we feel like we've been giving. I mean, today we gave, we <laughs> gave today. We didn't charge we anything for this podcast. We gave. No. So we we want something back. We'd like something back. So, so if you could reach out and, <laughs> and just, you know, it's tough. The buttons are heavy. They're hard to click. See, it's, but a, it's right here. It's can, right here. If you can make it happen, yes. uh, please like us, yes. share us, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Beautiful. Um, and, and, for, and for some of you that are commenting, I'm not sure if there's a button that actually allows us to comment back, but I know some comments have come in that we can't actually respond to. So I don't know if that's our side or your side. So I'm just throwing that in there. That um, I'm going to blame that on YouTube. I'm going to blame it. <laughs> I don't think it's our fault. And it's not your fault. So, uh, guys, get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. And, Jeff, uh, I'm looking forward to doing this again tomorrow. Gosh darn it, so am I. Jesus. <laughs>